One morning, Daisy arrived at Ellsbridge to collect her passengers for Natford, but had to wait for James's train to arrive before she could leave. She waited and waited, but there was no sign of James. She began to grow impatient. Where is that engine? We'll be late if we stand here any longer. Be patient. Shouldn't be too long now. Eventually, James panted into the station looking very exhausted indeed. Daisy was quick to criticise. And where have you been? <sighs> it's not my fault. The coal shed at Tidmouth was empty. I went to wait until someone brought a coal train from Trosby before I could fill up on coal. That sort of thing would never happen to me. Being the latest thing, a diesel rail car, it makes me highly sprung. Anything dirty and dusty like that rubbish you rely on is bad for my swerves. Says who? Says my friend. Fitter. Your what? My fitter is a very nice man. He comes every week to examine me carefully. Daisy, he says, never, never go near coal loaders. You are highly sprung, and anything dirty is bad for your swerves. Now, Daisy was only making this up, but James believed her. Just then, James's guard blew his whistle and waved his flag. As he began to leave the station, however, James had a devious idea. James's driver and fireman arrived for work. Come on, James. We have the slow goods to take this morning. James smirked. He was going to play a trick. Actually, Henry is taking the goods. I'm to take his passengers instead. Both his driver and fireman were perplexed. I don't told you that. Why, Daisy's fitter, of course. He's offering to look over us engines as well as Daisy. He came to visit me earlier this morning. James, he said, never, never pull trucks. You're a really splendid engine, and pulling trucks is bad for your appearance. The driver still didn't look convinced, but the fireman was chuckling. Whoever would have thought it, that our James was such a vulnerable- Vulnerable? Vulnerable? Very well, James. His driver went over to make the arrangements with the signal money yard manager, while James grinned with triumph. I meant to be on the local, aren't I? Sorry, I knew that been a bit of a of flight. While you normally take the opposite local when she takes a flyer, James is on the way while you're doing his good. Toby had just arrived at Natford with a stone train and had just shunted the brake van into a siding when James arrived. The tram engine was most surprised. Hello James. What are you doing here? Is Henry ill? Well you see little Toby, 
If Daisy's able to do what work she pleases, then why shouldn't I? Toby looked at him suspiciously. What do you mean? James explained about Daisy's fitter. So you see, little Toby, when I asked for Daisy to eventually to do Sir Fitter to me, I'll be able to do whatever work I want. All I have to do now is try and slip fast like this. James looked over, but was surprised to find Toby <laughs> laughing. What? What's so funny? Don't tell me you actually believed her. Why? Because Daisy's fitter isn't real. <laughs> it was just a lie she told to get out of work she didn't like. It doesn't work anymore. The fat controller knows all about it. <laughs> James went as white as a ghost at these words. Just then, the guard blew his whistle and waited for his flight. James quickly set off with Toby still laughing behind him. <laughs> the following day, however, when the driver and fireman arrived for work, James was quick to change his attitude. I'll speak with the yard man again about Vitter's orders, James. Then we can take the morning passenger train. Actually, I'm back to Boeing trucks today. <laughs> uh, Vitter says there's nothing to be worried about now. The driver was surprised but agreed. James sighed with relief. After he got up steam, he scurried off to collect his goods train. He shuffled into Ellsbridge, only to find Daisy idling in the platform next to him. Toby had told herself, Percy and Thomas about James the day before and spotted a chance for a tease. Oh, Percy, who is that? That's James, didn't you know? It looks like James, but it can't be. Why not? Why don't you ask my fitter? He says that pulling trucks for such a splendid engine like James is bad for his appearance. Both engines burst into laughter. James said nothing, he just fumed away in a cloud of steam. <laughs>